April 17, at the Kryaz airfield, which is located in Samara of the Russian Federation, the Soviet multi-purpose helicopter Mi-8 was destroyed, this is reported by the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, according to the intelligence agency, the Russians used the helicopter in the war against Ukraine. In particular, the enemy transported weapons and personnel in it, the cost of the Mi-8 ranges from 10 to 15 million dollars, designed by Mil Moscow helicopter plant, the Mi-8 series the most successful in the history of Russia's helicopter industry. Mi-8 series helicopters have won respect and admiration from helicopter operators around the world thanks to their advanced flight capabilities, high level of reliability and adaptability, ability to operate in a wide range of climatic conditions and ease of operation and maintenance. The Mi-8 boasts an ever-expanding range of operational capabilities thanks to Russian helicopters' ongoing upgrade programs. The helicopters can be fitted with a wide range of additional equipment to tackle a variety of missions. The helicopter boasts low levels of noise and vibration, is fitted with cabin climate control systems, and has emergency exits that meet the latest safety standards. Everything is designed to ensure passenger in-flight comfort and safety. Saudi Arabia took part in downing Iranian drones during strike on Israel. Saudi Arabia took part in downing some Iranian UAVs during Saturday's strike on Israel, a source in the royal family has admitted in response to a report by the Israeli public broadcaster Khan. According to the Israel Defense Forces, Tehran's attack involved 170 drones, more than 30 cruise missiles, and more than 120 ballistic missiles. The strikes came in retaliation for the bombing of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria, that left several senior Iranian military officers dead earlier this month. The US, UK and Jordan helped the Israel Defense Forces intercept almost all of the incoming projectiles during last Saturday's attack. According to Khan, Saudi Arabia joined in the effort as well. A source from the Saudi royal family who prefers anonymity has spoken with Khan and subtly acknowledged the kingdom's role, stating that Riyadh's air defenses automatically intercept any suspicious entity, according to the official website of the Al Saud dynasty. The same source accused Iran of instigating the conflict in Gaza between Israel and Hamas, accusing Tehran of attempting to unravel the progress in normalizing relations between Riyadh and West Jerusalem. Iran is a nation that endorses terrorism and the world should have curtailed it much earlier, the unnamed official told Khan. The anonymous royal's statements would represent a shift from recent Saudi rhetoric which has condemned Israel's onslaught against the Palestinians in Gaza while working to end decades-long enmity with Iran. The Sunni Muslim Kingdom has long been allied with the US and has aided crackdowns on Shia Muslims in places like Bahrain and Yemen, believing them to be proxies of the Islamic Republic. Riyadh and Tehran agreed to restore diplomatic relations in March 2023 in a deal brokered by China. CIA Director William Burns admitted at the time that the US had been blindsided by the talks. Iran's attack on Israel could be bad for Russia's war in Ukraine. Iran's attack on Israel on Saturday is bad not only for the Middle East, but also for Russia's war in Ukraine, Business Insider writes referring to the opinion of Michelle Grice, a senior policy researcher at RAND, an American think tank. Although it has been argued that Moscow benefits from chaos in the Middle East, diverting Western attention and resources from Ukraine, it stands to lose a great deal if the Israel-Hamas conflict escalates into a wider war, Grice wrote. Thus, she notes that Iran is now a critical military supplier to Russia. An Iranian ghost fleet has also been carrying Russian oil around the world since the war in Ukraine started, keeping Moscow's oil revenue flowing. But should Iran become embroiled in a wider conflict, it wouldn't be able to provide the same level of support to Russia. A broader regional conflict, particularly if it involves direct conflict between Israel and Iran, would limit Iran's ability to continue serving a military supplier to Russia, wrote Grice. Furthermore, Tehran may demand more support when Russia has limited capacity to provide it. She added, moreover, a broader Middle East conflict could boost China's clout in the region at Moscow's expense. According to the expert, even though Russia is preoccupied with the war in Ukraine, President Vladimir Putin has still managed to position himself as a potential power broker in the Middle East amid the Israel-Hamas war. But Putin's plan could fall apart should the war spill over regionally, since Beijing is also jostling to play peacemaker.
Russia could be especially sensitive to Chinese attempts to encroach on its influence in the Middle East, Grice wrote in her commentary. Since Russia's heavily sanctioned economy is already reliant on China, it would be even more exposed to Beijing's whims should Moscow not be able to hang onto any shred of global influence it still has, the analyst believes.